friends. I'm honored to be with you for a few minutes before this day that we're hoping that the union of Kara Alain Moed that we're chalishing. I don't know what that word is in English. Long wishing, hoping, and all of that and so much more. Kara Alain Moed. So this day that we absolutely have no idea what to even do with. We don't even know what, how to deal with it. We don't even know what, it, what it's really all about. It's a day we all show up and we're wondering every year, like, what have we really done to make sure that we don't come back to a day like today where we have no idea what the Indian is really all about. So getting through a day or having a day like this get through us and get through us together seems to me to be already a shtick on the chama, a little bit of a consolation. And therefore, I want to invite you to open your hearts with me to a very, what may seem like a very simple phrase in the Rebbe's writings, which I believe is like everything the Rebbe says is so much infinitely deeper than whatever we could fathom al derech abshat. And even whatever we could fathom al derech hadrash remez and sod. And that is to learn a certain phrase. I feel like I said before, we're going to stick to just something very concrete. It's a phrase that's two words, and we're going to get to it in a second. See how all year long, whenever I need to feel good about my Yiddishkeit, so I could, you know, the Azamra is basically easier than uh, almost every day of the year to Azamra, my Nekuda, their Nekuda, the world's Nekuda, to Azamra it as a verb. It seems like every other day of the year is, is a little bit shtickle easier than Tisha B'av. Because whatever I told myself during the year in order to make myself strong, confident, and give myself koyach to keep on going. It was enough for every other day of the year. But when I meet Tisha B'av, and I see that this place called Tisha B'av, all the nechamas I may give myself still don't fill this day. They don't give me anything to really be able to go over this day. There's no Indian of jumping over Tisha B'av. It says to me, okay, I have to stop for a second and be able to makabal the fact that whatever medicine I had to get me through the year was good until Tisha B'av. But on Tisha B'av, I have to understand why I don't have any medicine that I need, especially what I need. When the Kohen Godel would go into the Kodesh Kadashim every year on Yom Kippur, the Sasan V'Simcha that where the Gemara explains as the Kohen Gadol, when he would come out, and the, the Mishnah to, explains to us how he would make a yantav to him, to his family, and everyone, it's because the Kohen Gadol was able to restock on, on a new, powerful, passionate medicine that was only offered once a year in the Kodesh Kadashim. 
he was able to go in there, replenish, and come out, and the Yiddishkeit could continue. Literally, our relationship to Hashem was able to, con to continue based on something that was accessible in the Holy of Holies through the Kohen Agada. Like the Rebbe always says, when it comes to the Tires on Yom Kippur, so Yom Kippur is the Nekuda Pnimis on, on the levels of Olam Shana and Nefesh, the holiest man in the world, the Kohen Gadol, on the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur, would go into the holiest place in the world, the Kodesh Kodashim, and he would recite the holiest name in the world, which was God's Shem Hashem Bim Farash. And what an awesome concept that even is, all the more so the, the, the Yidin that were privileged to witness such a thing in the world. I can't even imagine what kind of what kind of koach of ischachas they would have as they would experience such a thing take place. However, you and I, as good as we are uh, dreamers and as much as our visualization is deep, what are we going to do when we comes another Yom Kippur uh, sorry, comes another Tisha B'Av. And I realize I'm so empty in the core, in the core of everything. I have, I, I ke'idu have nothing. Not ke'idu, I have nothing. On Tisha B'Av, I'm so, I'm so broken because the Kohen Gadol hasn't gone into the Kodesh Kodesh for thousands of years to bring down the new medicine, the new stock that's going to give us koach to keep on going. So this is where I wanted to really start. <laughs> We're only going to be together for a few minutes. This is where I really wanted to start and end. And it's something that I think about all year long. And even though it's a Torah, I saw it in Likutei Alochas, we're going to see it soon from Likutei Alochas. But the phrase that we're speaking about, and I would say the phrase that puts the morning perspective of Tisha B'Av in its place is a phrase called He'aras Haratzon. He'arat Haratzon. When you translate those two words on a very simple level, they come to mean the enlightenment of will, which has many different Kabbalistic ramifications, Oros, Ratzon, all these different things. I try to stick to it in the most simple, simple way. What you and I, you know, I shouldn't say, I always stop myself. I don't know what you're going through. I can just share what I'm going through. And a little bit about what I know some of my chevra are going through, just based on conversations that we have. But some of us go through so often is not that we're not up to good things or we're not busy, hopefully doing some good in the world. The pain that we have is that we're not sure what we really want to be doing. We're not sure what God wants of us. And we don't, we're not even certain what we want from ourselves. And that can leave a person in a very, very fragile state. Because you know, if a person's up to no good and he says, I want to do chuba, I want to be good, and then he starts doing good, mele, he has direction. The person's kind of involved in good things, but something in his, his nose tells him, this is not exactly what I want to be doing. Oh, I don't even know what I want in this world. I don't know what you exactly want from me. That can be more painful and more um, like self-torturous even. Because the ratzon is not mu'ar, the will is not enlightened. What you want to do in this world is not clear to you. What you think the Ribbon Shleilam wants you to do, and of course, I'm, I'm always very conscious of saying, aside from what obviously our Holy Torah tells us, and the Shulchan Aruch tells us how to be a Yid, those are things on the, I'm not, not on a Prat level, that's on a cloud level, I'm in the part of the cloud. And I have to do everything like everyone else. But on the, on, the, on the level of why was I sent to this world? What do I want from this world? What do I really want to be doing here? When we're able to take that and put that into the context of Chorban Abais, okay, now we're beginning 
we're beginning to now see some light, uh, at least in the understanding of what stands behind this Indian of Avedis, of mourning, of Tishab, of, of, of basically histalkus, of the removal of, of clarity. So the way that I initially learned this from Rabbi Shlomo Kavach, he said like this, he said in the Beis HaMikdash, Rabbi Nachman explains on the Beis HaMikdash, what was shining was this concept called He'aras Aratzon, the enlightenment of will, which meant that let's say you were completely broken. You, in your own life, you, things were going, you're up to no good, and it was time to come to Beis HaMikdash, you had to bring a korban, or whatnot, whatever the dealings were that you had to be there. But obviously that's what we... So we understand the functioning of the Beis HaMikdash for the Pashto Yid. So you would walk into the Beis HaMikdash and somehow the combination of, I would, I would assume, again, this is just, well, what could we do? We just assume and, and, and guesstimate, but the love that a person felt being welcomed by the Kohen the nigunim, the amazing music and orchestra that was accompanying you while you brought your sacrifice, as well as the shechina, the shechina kedusha, God's divine presence, which is something we can't even begin to put into words, but we know that it was there by Sarisha. A culmination of those three things left you found, meaning, when you came into the Beis HaMikdash and you weren't sure what you wanted from yourself or what you wanted from life or what you wanted from God, when you walked out, when we say you walked out found, it means you had a sense of what you want to do in this world. You had a sense of what you want from the world. And you had a really clear and confident sense as to what the Ribbon Shleilam wants from you. What he wants from you. And from the time that the Beis HaMikdash has been destroyed, yes, we can say a lot of different things about the beauty of Yerushalayim isn't the same beauty. Isn't the, be the concept of beauty doesn't exist in the world, it's true. And we can say other things about things that we don't have anymore. And all those things are true. But on the Shoresh, in the source of it all, I must allow myself, I, Shlomo, I, I hope this, you know, Beis Hashem resonates with others as well, but I as the individual must allow myself to be able to focus on Tisha B'Av on the fact that what pains me is that I live so much of my life with something I don't want to admit. And that is the suffix regarding my Ritzonas in this world. All year long, I know I'm doing good things. And if I don't know I'm doing good things, a pep talk will help me. And Tish B'av, I can't even say shalom to someone. All year long, I'm a, I'm a little bit confused. I'm broken. Nishta here, nishta there. But you know what? I open up a safer and I get a little chizuk. I mean, like I get busy, but I avoid here, a sugya here. This, this, a piece from something comes and gives me chiyas. And Tisha B'Av, I can't learn Torah. So the things that generally are able to bring me a place of going beyond the, the, the need to know, I don't have to know what my Ratzon is, I don't have that on Tisha B'Av. I don't have it all year long, but on Tisha B'Av, it's mamish not there. It's not accessible to me. So on the level of dreamers, can you imagine a world the presence of the Beis HaMikdash, which would mean that all the broken and confused neshamas in the world would have a concept of who they are, where they're heading, and what they actually want to do in the world, and what they believe is their tafkir in the world. These are dvarim berumo shalayim. You know, take a kehila, take a community. Can you imagine 10 people in the community that really had this concept of he'ara saratzam? that the will was illuminating, it was shining before them. So things we barely understand. But I, I can begin, I can begin to understand the need of the medicine once I realize how sick I am in the core of things. 
as long, I remember the, once saw this video, I'm sure you saw this too, of a person, Nebuch Hayyid, who, who became a, a missionary, Rahman al Islam, a Meshuma, then he came, he was standing online for dollars by the Babaji Rebbe. You, you can find this online. And he's coming, this, what, a, what, a, what a broken person. He's waiting online and he's coming to the Rebbe and he's trying to push his trip on the Lubavitch Rebbe and Nishma Sa'idim. And the Rebbe looked at him and said to him, the greatest sign of someone that's sick is that they don't know that they're sick. He looked him right in the eye and he told him that. You know, all year long, I, I can't, those words, I know, I can't let that, you know, the Rebbe was so, so big on making sure, yeah, to deal with stuff, of atzvus, whatever it is, it's a few minutes in a day, set an hour in the day, whatever that time you give yourself to focus on it, and then go weiter. On Tisha B'Av, it's a whole chunk of time where basically the Torah itself tells me you, there's nowhere to run to. Ah, there's nowhere to run to? I'm going to be in it. I'm going to allow myself to realize that the greatest illness in the world is when you're not even aware that you're ill. I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to get up at Chatzos and make my way out of there if I still have to go through this fast. But we're all tikva, we're all prayer with so much love and longing for all of Ami to have a tremendous hischachus aratzam, the illumination of our will, the renewal of our will, all of that should be able to bring about the, the final redemption, the redemption that knows nothing else other than ki ein be'ayin yiru v'shuv Hashem shivatziyam, where we see and witness all that we've always dreamt for. And the lots on the Elyon, how much the Yubam wants us to believe in ourselves, should be completely mu'ar, should be enlightened. What a world that would be. What a world that's going to be. So maybe the Avoda during the nine days towards Tisha B'av is gathering all the Aras Aratsan that you can find in yourself, all the tefillahs over Aras Aratsan you could find within yourself and hopefully preventing a day of Tisha B'av being a day where we can't say hello to each other, can't learn Torah, but a day of sharing in the hum, very humble way, without, do you know how much the Yerbono Shleilam believes in me? And do you know, can I share with you what's become clear to me as to what God wants of me, just of me? He'aras haratzam, sheniska.